Well, today I want to talk a little bit about what love is. And today I want to talk about how love is the source of our life on earth and our life with God. More on that in a moment. Welcome back to the Word. Welcome back to our time together studying God's Word. We are in the book of Romans. We've been here for a little while. If you've been following, if you've been uh, reading and learning and inwardly digesting God's Word with me, uh, we have been here with, uh, with God in the letter to the church in Rome, the letter to you um, all, as well. So we are now in Romans chapter 13. Our fundamental passage is going to be thir Romans 13, 8 through 10. And our focus today is going to be love is the source. And if we have time today, we'll probably do it tomorrow. We'll, we'll take a side swing over to 1 Corinthians 13 uh, to talk about what love is. But I digress for the moment. Let's stay with where we're at. Now, yes, Thursday, excuse me, Thursday, talked about how our life is to be uh, following the authorities that God had established. Because, And if you remember, and if you don't, I'll, I'll put a link along the bottom here to Thursday's devotion for you to kind of play catch up uh, with you. But the key element that I wanted to go over was do not be overcome by evil, but be over, but overcome evil with good. That's on chapter 12, verse 21, the very last verse. So that went into the subjection to the authorities, uh, and God established it all. We may not like, we may not like the way sometimes it works out. However, um, that's what we're do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good, the good that is God. Now I want to talk about what is the good. So we'll move forward to for, for Romans 13. We're going to go at verse 7. Pay all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, Honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Wow. Especially in light of everything that has been going on within the framework of the world around the church, and I would dare say sometimes within the framework of the church itself. Because remember, the church is made up of sinners who have been saved and know that they have been saved and believe that they have been saved. That doesn't mean necessarily the sin is 100% done away with, gone, kaput. It's still part of this physical body, this physical mind. It's part of my immediacy. Let's say, for example, somebody cuts you off on the highway doing 95 miles an hour and just swings right in front of your front bumper as he's swinging or she's swinging around everybody. And the first thought that you want to have in your mind, apart from being he's going to get people killed, is that uh, I want to give him the international sign of diplomacy. That's instantaneous. That's human. But then we plead to God. And this is the difference between the instantaneous human and, and a person who is also human and a saint. The saint will say, God, I am sorry for that instantaneous reaction. 
please forgive me. I know that you love me. And there are days I don't show that I love you enough. And I don't, days I am not showing that I love this person who was weaving in and out of traffic very much love. I wasn't showing him or her very much love either. Forgive me of my sin, dear God, and put me back on the path of righteousness. You see, that's what a Christian's going to do. It may not happen immediately, but it's going to happen because that's what the will of God does. It's, it's the love of God. It's the love that God has given to us that fundamentally changes the way we react, the way we respond, but more than that, the way we live. And how we live in, uh, in some cases, constant repentance. The way we live sometimes in constant reflection but in most cases, giving and sharing the love that God has given to us by means of how we act. And how do we act? Well, Paul was talking about some of the, some of the commandments. Uh, didn't, he didn't quote all of them, but he quoted uh, at least a third of them. I'll have to look at them and count in a minute. But the reality is he is saying, following the commandments is not for the Christian because that's what I have to do. It's because I love. It's because I am loved. I have been loved. I am loved. I will be loved constantly and continually by God himself through Jesus Christ. I am loved. You are loved when you, you are loved anyway. Don't get me wrong. People are loved. God loves you people. If you're watching this and you're a non-Christian, do not think that God does not love you. Because he does. God loves you so much that he was willing to send Jesus to this earth to be the propitiation, and we talked about this a couple, few days ago, to be the salvation for your sins. God loves you. God loves everyone. We talked about this yesterday on the invitation to the wedding. God loves everybody. He invites everybody. He wants everybody to be there. Sometimes we, that's the problem. It's not God. It's us. We are the problem. Mm -hmm. We are the problem, not God. We are the problem that don't recognize that to be a part of the body of Christ, one needs to repent of sins and receive the grace of God. But I want to finish our little short little passage here. Uh, you can, you know what? I, I'm thinking about this too. Uh, when you want, stop the video, pause, think, and. And I'll show you the, I think I've got one here. Hold, hold the thought and hold it, hold it, hold it. Uh, yes. Oh, let me find a spot here to where I have got lots of markings. Yeah. Uh, don't be afraid to mark this up. If you have an electronic version, don't be afraid to highlight your version. Uh, there, I, I don't know if you can see that. Very well. See the underlining right there? That's in Philippians 2. I'm trying to draw my attention to something. Stop. You know, if, if, you're, if you're concerned about something, stop. Take a look. Re-energize re your connection to God's Word here and, and move forward. Anyway, um, let me, let me kind of continue here with our, our section in Romans for a minute to kind of wrap us up, get us going. Oh, no one anything except to love one another for the one who loves has fulfilled the law. This is agape again. This is that self-sacrificing love, that love that is the love that God pours down to us through Christ Jesus and pours into us. It is that love that would be willing to die for someone else. Quite frankly, that's basically fundamentally what it would be. I don't love you because I'm trying to get something from you. 
that's not even love to begin with. I don't love you because I'm enamored with you. Um, I'm attracted to you. That's eros. That's a form of love, but that's not this one. This love goes beyond eros, goes beyond philos, and goes into this love that I am here for you no matter what. And I'm going to do the things that God calls me, tells me to do, and that is to love you. It's the fulfillment of God's law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, that's number six. You shall not murder, that's number five. You shall not steal, that's number seven. You shall not covet, that is number nine and ten. Uh, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Remember what Jesus was asked. Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? They're trying to pin him down to one of those commandments right there. And what was Jesus' answer? The first and foremost is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, with everything that you've got, love God. And the second is like the first, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your wife as yourself. Paul talks about that in Ephesians 5 when he talks about the bride of Christ, also the relationship between man and woman, bride and groom. So he says, it's, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law, or fulfilling of the law. It's more of an action word, fulfilling, continual uh, action right there. However, here's the interesting thing. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. I've got one last point about this. Love points out sin. Yeah, love points out sin. Why? Because love does not want sin to be running my life nor your life. Love wants you to get away from sin, selfishness, uh, arrogance, pompousness, uh, conceit. Uh, love wants you to stop thinking about you all the time. You know what? Let's go back to the opening example about the guy driving 95 miles an hour down the highway, weaving in and out of traffic. Why is he doing that? Why is she so intent on flying past everybody? Well, it's about himself or herself. It, it is. Either they got a vehicle that can do it and see, look at me, I've got my, vroom, 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 I got my hot rod. I would hazard a guess to say a lot of times, and again, this is a guess, but a lot of times I'm late. I'm late for an appointment. I'm late for work. I'm, I got to do this. I got to do this. And, and, and I got to get there. <laughs> When you're in that kind of a mode, you're not thinking about anybody else. You're thinking about yourself. That's not love. Love says you got to stop thinking about yourself. You have to start thinking about the other, for that's what love is. And love fulfills the law. So as we kind of get with a word going here in our lives for today, we're going to look at love as the source of what I do. Love is the source of my fulfilling God's commands. Am I going to do it perfectly in this lifetime? Absolutely not. But love is also the fulfillment of repentance. Uh, love is the fulfillment of forgiveness and new life. We can dive more into this yet. Yeah. We also need to move forward on this. So I mean, I'm not going to do a, uh, a short digression, short series on what love is. And I think we'll take time uh, to do that, uh, what love is, um, at another day and time. But for today, in this short segment, love fulfills the law of God. Love is not thinking about myself. Love is living my life for others. So let's uh, use God's word today to love one another. Thank you, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.